Susan Bonani. Hello, hello, Abshani. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you are listening to another episode of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Go. Uh, my name is Misha. My name is Nesipo. And yeah, we're back, guys. Um, it's, been a while. <laughs> it's been a minute. Um, you know, but life is life, and we need to life. <laughs> True. True. Have you have you been? Have you been? Since? I'm all right. Um, I've been having some issues with my IBS and my gut. Mm-hmm. Um, what's actually interesting is that it's being linked to stress. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so need to take better care of myself yeah. and what I eat and manage my stress levels. So that I can have a healthy, functional <laughs> colon, <laughs> which is what we want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you? dope. I've been, I've been really good. Um, it's, it's very strange owning that mm. um, because I'm not used to being just okay. Like there's being a balance. So I've been, I've been. It's about a month and a couple of maybe days or weeks now. I've been taking, you know, a head medicine. And it actually works. Mm. <laughs> so it's actually really been working, hence why I feel good, which is amazing. And it's it's made, you know, managing work much easier. It's made managing my studies much easier. Um, I mean, obviously, life is still hectic and mm. I'm tired like 100% of the time. But I've been really um, enjoying this sort of new state that I'm okay. in. So shout out medicine. Which is good. Like yeah, shout out to medicine. I yeah. hope it heals me too. So <laughs> definitely, I'm tired definitely. Of this pain. Yeah. But yeah, so today we're going to speak about tokenism. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure the demographic that listens to this channel has experienced that before. Yeah. Um, so tokenism essentially speaks to performative inclusion. Yeah. Uh, the first time I came across the word token was actually on a really fucked up show. <laughs> Do you want to guess? Um, South Park? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, How did I know? I, I had no idea why the black kid was called Token. It took me a while. <laughs> oh my God, his name was... <laughs> yes, the black kid on South Park, his name was Token. <laughs> and It's only hitting me now. <laughs> yeah, dude. So yeah, wow. a Token is essentially that black kid on South Park, like that one person that's included in things so that people seem more accepting and inclusive. Wow. Meanwhile, Where like they were always making fun of him. Yeah, yeah. making so fun of him, making black jokes, yeah, you know, true. all these different things. Um, I feel like Token was a mirror right. of our own lives. Like I've been a Token before. Mm-hmm. Um, as most people know, I went to like a really small Jewish school. There mm-hmm. were literally two black kids in my grade. And it was a matter of survival of the least <laughs> like <laughs> it was literally like okay cool it's myself and this other girl and yeah. i want to be the most liked black girl yeah for the longest time it was like that so i was the token and she was on the receiving end of all of the anti-blackness while i was also receiving anti-blackness but it was more covert and yeah. she was receiving the overt stuff and it took a while for me to realize what was happening. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that I was actually the token I used to laugh at uh, on South Park. Yeah. And also the fact that my being was being weaponized to compromise someone else. Yeah. And to realize that at like 16 years old is really fucked up. Yeah. Because you're like, whoa, I mean nothing here. I'm actually like a political tool. Yeah. So I don't know if you experienced tokenism in like high school. Definitely. Or Definitely. Um, although... I mean, yeah, for the longest time, I, well, primary school, I went to a, um, a, a black school, or whatever that means. Um, uh, well, majority black school, mm. yes. And then in grade eight, I was, the oh, it was a very small school. It was a very small private school in a small town. And I was the only black girl in the class. Mm. And then there were two black guys in the class. So it was about... It was about eight of us, I mm-hmm. think, in the class, in grade eight. Or some eight or something. And there were two black guys, and I was the only black girl. So that was sort of my s- experience, first experience, you know, with tokenism mm. um, in that class. Although, luckily, I was friends with all the other, you know, different mm-hmm. grades, my brother's mm-hmm. grades and his, and his um, classmates. So it made it easier to feel a bit more included. But I, 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 I definitely experienced tokenism then. And then when I moved to, to Nelspreet uh, and I was in a much bigger, obviously, school, majority yeah. white school, then I was like, that's when I kind of saw how tokenism is mm. at play. Although there were a bunch of other, you know, black girls, but some of us did find ourselves sort of in the, in the, the, in white, the, out, circles, yeah, in the yeah. white circles as, as sort of outliers, which even that is mm. just, ugh. 
Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's really messed up because for a lot of us, we only really realized that we were, um, that they didn't really like us. Mm, mm, like, mm. And, and by like us, I, I mean as in like us in totality. Yes, like yes. As, as, your as entire being, your, your including entire being, your blackness. Including your blackness, True. exactly. And, and, you know, including your black family and your black, mm, mm, you know, mm. everything. Um, when, when something, you know, like a racist incident would happen, or even afterwards, for a lot of us, it was like, you know, on Facebook. Yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> after, after like, uh, you know, something happens, let's say like a fees must fall, I mean, although that's a bit late, a lot of us realized it much earlier on. And it helped because I went to a majority black and colored university. So mm. the moment I got there, I was like, Wait, wait, wait. Something ain't right. Something is not right, you know, because obviously those relationships were sort of, the moment I moved, those relationships just kind of went, they just didn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they went to their respective universities, they continued just chilling with white people and white people alone. This is actually very interesting because um, I was best friends with a white girl Mm -hmm. from about grade 9, 10 till first year. Mm -hmm. And... At that time, I was very aware of race and racial dynamics. Yeah. But the way this person positioned themselves throughout high school was yeah. that they were aware too. Yeah. And they were the one person who would always point things out as well. Yeah. But as soon as we got to varsity and Fees Must Fall happened, yes. that person did a complete 180 yeah. and went back to their true self and was racist as fuck. And I keep asking myself... Were they always racist and did I not notice because it was um, covert Mm -hmm. or was it that they just became overtly racist in varsity because that's literally what happens to a lot of white kids. A lot of white kids, So when you say that thing about how they just kept to themselves and Mm. they didn't notice what was happening in the world, that resonates a lot because that switch happened for me in varsity and I went from being the only black friend to, to... like the space where it's acceptable to not have a black to friend. To not have a black friend, and yeah. And they then could be honest about whatever they thought. Yeah. But it was just so messed up because obviously, you know, you're a kid and, and you you hold these friendships or whatever dear to mm, you, especially mm, in mm, a situation mm. where someone is actually your best friend, mm, not mm. just anybody. And so then they just like do a complete switch and it's like, whoa, dude, like, That's you know. when your token is... Your token state or yeah. token dream is not enough. Yeah. Like for black girls who could not token <laughs> for eternity. But um, okay, cool. So moving away from just the racial aspect, mm-hmm. I, I, I find there's this concept now of um, gay baiting. Oh, yeah. Where you find straight men um, using homoerotica, yes. sort of, yeah. as a joke. Mm-hmm. And like playing into that space of almost acting like they're being inclusive, but mm-hmm. they're doing it to mock gay people and they're also doing it for clout. Yeah. And I, I don't fully have the words to unpack it, yeah. but it's like, it's a very weird it's dynamic a, a, occurring yeah. online. Yeah. It's almost similar to nigger fishing, yeah. which obviously has different objectives, but it's, it's yeah. both weird and it's both a, a performative, inclusive act. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to embrace or, or sort of be comfortable in your relationships with you know with mm, men with whether other, straight with other identities or, or, yes. yeah, with other identities and then there's just what's happening online like you know it, it's it's really like you said it's very performative it's hard to pinpoint because you're like is this person being genuine or are they like you know uh, are they are they are they performing you know because for me a lot of the times it's like the person slips and it's like oh the thing is that slip happens because when mm. people do things like gay baiting mm-hmm. i get upset because i think of all the gay people who cannot necessarily express themselves as they wish yes. without facing abuse exactly so that's why it then becomes problematic when people gay bait because they're doing it for fun and yeah. it exists in a vacuum. Yeah. It's like, I understand when people, when um, queer people get upset when straight people go to gay clubs and yeah. post it online and all of that because it's safe for them. Yeah. But queer people can't do that without the danger of some kind of violence. Exactly. So that's why gay baiting for me is really fucked up because it's like, you're doing this for clout and mm-hmm. you're doing this to be praised as an alley, yeah. but you know that 
you're safe and all of this that you're doing as a joke. Mm -hmm. Whereas when somebody wants to express their true emotions, they cannot. Yeah. Actually, shout out for, uh, to us for bringing this up because it's actually uh, Pride Month. Yay. Yay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just been a very strange thing. And a, a few people have been outed for this, but it kind of sort of disappears into the abyss because I think a lot of us don't have the words for this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, there's no, there's no, I don't know, there's no way to to pinpoint exactly what it is they're doing and so we can correct it. Mm, because I feel like a lot of the men that do it mm -hmm. um, hide behind the idea of, I'm um, no, my masculinity is not toxic. It's not toxic. Like, I, yeah. I'm not hyper-masculine, so I yeah. can do all of these things. But there's a difference between expressing your masculinity mm -hmm. in a non-toxic way and mocking queer yeah. people. Just because you're hyper-masculine, hyper-masculinity and toxicity aren't necessarily sort of interlinked. You can be... You can, you know, there, there are people who are not uh, uh, hyper-masculine, but they are toxic in their mm, masculinities. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, um, that's you know, yeah. Whereas, and then someone who is hyper-masculine, who perhaps isn't. I mean, although hyper-masculinity just in itself or someone is, who is, is masculine, but yeah, not. Ab absolutely. Yeah. It always gets awkward because then, then you get hit on. And, and then you react violently. And then you react violently. And it's like... Okay, and you have no problem doing this to women. Um, you think it's completely okay. You think, you know, women are free range, you can do whatever. The moment someone who is, you know, gay wants to hit on you, and it's not even in like a hectic way, now you want to It's be in like, the way nah. that it's not necessarily, you. this is going to sound victim shamey or mm -hmm. weird, but um, it's not necessarily not understandable for someone to hit on you if mm. you've been gay baiting. Mm -hmm. Like, you've been posting yes, in a way been that suggests that you yeah. enjoy Absolutely. attention from Absolutely. men. So when a man hits on you... Yeah, I get what you mean. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I get it sounds I get very victim <laughs> <laughs> blaming, but like, within this context of yeah. gay baiting yeah. and posting as if you are into men, I And a lot of the times, like, they are flip. the ones who also, you know, not necessarily compliment men, but they kind of... Um, not I don't know how to put it like they kind of hit on men but like it's not really it's like but a it joke is, but it's That's not really so we don't know it. <laughs> yeah. but but anyway um this this topic was of gay baiting actually came up because of this other thing that people do with queer people where there's a lot of tokenism where mm -hmm. people feel the need to just go out there and Oh my gosh, I have a gay friend. Yeah. And they're not making genuine friendships. They're just yeah. doing it for to the collect sake of points. Seeming, yeah, yeah, to, to collect seem diversity inclusive. points. Yeah. And that's that's like, really messed Thanos, up. Calm down with yeah. your <laughs> with the diversity stones. And then when you wanna you decide when you when it's time to support people, you're like, nope. Exactly. I'm out. Exactly. And that's really messed up. I think seeing people as tools that you can use to perform. Yeah, that's uh, up. is really messed up. Like, forget the identities. Uh, it's it it just boils down to feeling like you can use people. Mm, You're a mm, user. Mm, mm. Um, you and don't. I'm sorry, sorry mm -hmm. to disturb, but a lot of people do that. A lot of abusive people. Yeah. Actually, use tokenism as a tool. Yes. So. So people are like, ha, huh, but, but no. Uh, but this guy's friends with he this. He's friends with yeah. this. He's friends with all the feminists. Yeah. He's this is this, this. And we know one manipulative person that's actually done that really well, where mm -hmm. they position themselves with like women, queer people, this, this, and then they speak yeah. about those issues, but behind closed doors, they know that they're doing the most. Exactly. But nobody, but the people they do things to often think that no one would believe them because they're friends. Yeah. They have all of these diversity stones. Yeah. So <laughs> we need to be careful of yeah. going around gathering diversity stones, but also we need to be woke and pop yeah. as the potential diversity stones. We need to be able to identify when somebody is becoming friends with us because yeah. of our identities. Yeah. And I feel like it's probably a difficult thing to do, mm. but if we look at the nature of the conversations and how they go and the yeah. things people say, yeah. you can kind of like tell when someone... When someone isn't really being a genuine friend. Um, yeah, it, it really is a matter of distinguishing when someone genuinely is, is, your, is your friend or wants to be your friend. We know just the sort of signs, mm, I mm, suppose, mm. you know, the, the sort of general all around. Um, but I do think we need to treat it with um, special sort of sensitivity and care mm. uh, when it comes to people's identities. Um, 
because yeah it's just it's it's a sensitive matter um and just yeah just don't don't collect don't, uh, don't collect diversity stones no. like oh, but, but companies <laughs> love doing that actually actually <laughs> in the workplace guys and it's so rife the more workplace, and more these days yeah the more i've worked the more i learned that people talk about diversity mm-hmm. but they don't want it in the work that is done. Yeah. They don't want it in the opinions that contribute to the work. Yeah. They want it in the bodies that occupy the space. Yes. Outside of that, the thoughts, everything else, it doesn't matter. They don't care. At all. Like, at all. Di- it's diversity for newspaper articles yeah. and BEE scores. Yeah. Outside of that. Outside of that, they're not interested. Like, I can attest to that, like, you know, being a, 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 a relatively young person at work. Mm-mm. I think I'm one of the youngest. But... They're still, and, and they're all about, no, young people, we want young people. Yeah, it's like you our know. parliament. Yeah, young people this, young people that. And then, like, you get there, and there's no, not necessarily space for you, but, like, there's you no get space there. There's no space for your opinions. There's no space for your opinions. You can clearly see that there's no sort of uh, uh, development plan uh, uh, to get you, you know, mm, mm, to mm, a certain mm, place mm, or mm, to a certain mm, point. There's no, there's just no thought to it. They just wanted to have you there. Just so they can tick a box. Just so they can tick a box. And, you know, we want to develop young people. And then you get there and nothing happens. But also, I've, I've, I've also come to see that um, the whole thing about developing young people mm. and getting young minds into a space or getting mm. fresh minds or getting, like, diverse minds into a space mm-hmm. is that they often forget about who are these diverse people going to be dealing with yes so you cannot bring in people with different identities and then give them someone who you haven't put thought into to report to yeah or put the 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 person you put in charge of developing those minds Mm -hmm. you haven't applied any thought to how well trained are they to deal with diverse minds and do they have the ability to source out the best of each diverse mind so that we can build something that makes sense yeah because nine times out of ten they'll say okay we want to develop these young people and then the person who's in charge of the young people they're not aligned with that that. they feel threatened and then they start to sort of jeopardize that whole everything yeah that whole thing that's literally i feel that that happens in every single space because it's more about diversity as mere inclusion. Mm-hmm. After the inclusion, we don't care about what happens. Mm-hmm. And then you're, you're setting people up because they're getting excited. I'm in the space. It's speaking about diversity, higi haga. Yeah. And then they feel failed after some time because exactly. nothing is happening. Exactly. My diverse culture or mind that I'm bringing here, mm-hmm. nothing is happening nothing to is it. Happening nothing is being it. done yeah. with it. Yeah. So now you feel failed and you get frustrated mm-hmm. and people leave. Yeah. And that's just scary to me because it means you're always going to be leaving because nobody thinks about who is going to be in, char- in charge of exactly. this diversity and inclusion. Yeah. And they don't train them to, to, to you know, to, oh, to, to adequately hone that, that diversity and, 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 you know, the youth and, you know, all that stuff. Um, actually, shout out Youth Month also. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's actually really, really messed up because... You know, you let's say you get to an interview and they're like, "Yeah, no, our group, you know, we it's really want this, want this, this we're all about this. black women. Yeah, this is in our ethos." And then you get there and, you and just, there's none of that. There's none of that. You're completely shut down. You and know? anything activistly feels like an insult. Yeah, like it's actively rejected. Yeah, um, but yeah, that it's, was a rant. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, I, I want to talk about token women friends. In like, what context? You know, you know the girlies. The oh, girlies. The, oh, the girlies. The, the girlies, girlies that always think everyone wants their boyfriend. Mm. Also, no, the ones that also like hanging out with the men. Oh, like I like hanging out with the guys because I, you know they have less drama. I always, I've, I've had many friendships with men, yes. and now I've told myself I, I don't want any friendship with men that aren't in relationships because men, in friendships, use you for emotional labor. Absolutely, and. I've never received anything back from a male friendship. Mm. Like, on an emotional level, I've yeah. never been fulfilled from by a, a male. Straight it, male friendship? Straight never. male friendship, I've yeah. never. It was yeah. as if all the women that were friends with the men mm-hmm. were doing the work yes. and building the friendship yeah. themselves. There was nothing coming from, from them, the yeah. men. Yeah. So I don't understand that, like, I don't understand women tokens that are friends with just men. Yeah, I don't get it. Like, what are you, like, what well, are you getting the out boys, of that? I don't, I don't see like, it. Like, genuinely speaking, what are you getting out of that? Because no judgment, like, but a little bit of judgment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't 
for me, it, friendship is a give and take. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, what are you getting from that? Besides no drama. When you think about, and that no drama thing is a lie. It's a because lie. Because you're constantly putting out this person's fires. Exactly. You feel like there's no drama because you're not actively involved, but yeah. you're going out of your way to stop And you're always counseling them. And yes. you're always oh, speaking to other people on their behalf. And, and, and. Like, girl, focus <laughs> on your life. Like, like, I find it interesting that, because I think there's no benefit because... Mm -hmm. When you compare being a token, like, in high school, being friends with white people, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. There was a, an amount of, like, protection yes. from racial shit. Yeah. You got nice food. <laughs> I mean, this sounds <laughs> fucked up, but, like, there was, there was, an, amount of, there was an amount of social capit yes. capital that was, yes. and cultural capital yeah. that was transferred yeah. to you from them. Yeah. And there are certain things that you, you have and know mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have known had you not been a token. This sounds really fucked up. <laughs> but, like, that's how social and cultural capital works. Yeah. So I don't see the benefits what, of being just friends with men. Like, what are you getting from them? Like, social capital-wise, let's be honest, what are you, what are you getting? Like, aside from the girlfriends or women who like them giving you side eyes, like, what are you, <laughs> what are you actually getting from them? Like, is that the life you want for yourself? A do life you of really, side eyes do and you really want to be? Yeah, like, come on, sweetie, like, please don't do this. I feel like those are a, a sort of, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I want to liken them to the black people that bring their spicy white Yo. friends to uh, events that are specifically for black, for black people. people. <laughs> That's another, the token <laughs> white girl the is actually another, girl. there's a lot of those in Joburg actually. So many of those. It's interesting. So many of it's those. It's always like, are you trying to piss your dad off? Like, are you genuinely <laughs> down? <laughs> I never understand what exactly is up. And but yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a very interesting dynamic. I remember when we went to Bonobo. Uh huh. I've never seen so <laughs> many token white girls in my life. I was like, this is an epidemic. <laughs> like I was like, wow, 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 wow. But I always feel like white girls are somehow better than white boys. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of when they under once they understand certain issues. Mm -hmm. It's rare, but they don't center themselves. Yeah. Like, it's still not acceptable for people to bring them into black-only safe spaces. Mm -hmm. But when you are at a hangout or whatever, and yeah. it so happens that they, they, they don't center themselves as yeah. much as a white boy would be yeah. actively trying to perform. I mean, and both are violent, but... I'm not racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, 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 I, I, get, I get what you mean. I don't always jump out. But I get what you mean. Like, it's not... A white man, y'all. <laughs> That's like a special I've never, I've kind of creature. I've actually never seen a token white boy. Oh, I've only seen one. Have I? No, nah, I was also here in Joburg. I don't think I have either. Have I? I don't think I have. Not not like the token white girls. Yeah, no, the, the token white girls are in yeah, numbers. They be tokening like, like they are in numbers. It's it's so strange how it's like now flipped because you know when we're younger it's like there's a token black girl yes, yes, and now yes, it's like a token yes. white girl. It's actually um, interesting. But I hope you're getting something out of that. Uh, well, <laughs> not as the white girl, as the black girls. I hope you know you're not dealing with, you're not having to do a lot of work labor for the person. and work yeah, for this yeah, person. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to have conversations. Um, it's another thing, it's to, another labor, thing to have actually, to labor for them and having to to explain everything to them and not be on the receiving end of empathy. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, because these types of relationships all boil down to empathy. Mm -hmm. Are you mm -hmm. receiving it just as much as you're, you're giving, giving it? it yes, um, yes. And so, yeah, guys, I hope you're not like doing too much work. Hey, on behalf that's a of lot of work. these folk, yeah, no. And I mean, I know shame, it can be a bit awkward when you're like in these spaces and you're there with your token white friend, everybody's just looking at you like, <laughs> <laughs> what you doing here with that? <laughs> what are you doing? You don't yeah. even know yet. I remember at Afropunk, the first one, I was just like, every time, I'm like, come on. You know? <laughs> I mean, I know it, it doesn't say only black people, but I was like, oh, like, seriously? Speaking of Afropunk, can we just have... Oh, that lineup though. <sighs> that lineup though. Guys. Solange better come. Like, I line up. Every time I'm she posts ready. a picture naked, people are like, go put a jacket on her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, listen, I'm so ready to see the things Gold Lake, that I imagine. Miguel. I've seen Gold Miguel Lake. before. Have you? And, uh, yeah, in Cape Town. I waited oh, for yeah? hours. Uh -huh. But it was amazing. Like, uh -huh. he's in my top three. Mm -hmm. And then Gold Link. Yes, Gold uh, Link. And then the local, what's his face? Ah, oh, Ducky Fiction. <laughs> Shout out. Yes, Zoe. I can't wait for Zoe. Um, that's definitely one of my um, top people that I'm, I'm looking forward to. She's really amazing. 
else is performing? Lilo, what's good? Shout out. FIFA. FIFA. A, lot a lot of people. A lot of local locals. people. I'm, I'm really excited for that. That's if I go. So, yeah, guys, <laughs> oh, please I have to go. go to Afropunk. I think I'm going. Yeah. I hope nobody dies. But also, I also want Afropunk to like. To, to just get the stuff together mm, also mm, because mm, you know mm, last mm, year's mm. one they really like messed up um you know with the transphobia and whatnot really really and they up. really ignored yeah. everyone who was complaining about that 100%. and that actually is a, an extension of tokenism yes. within itself yes, where actually. you guys position yourselves as this woke i hate the word woke yeah as this <laughs> f- it's, it's the easiest word to yes, use yeah as this woke event mm-hmm. and then you do things that go against that and yeah. when the people that you claim to be standing up for point it out yeah you reject that it's like and that's that's so counter guys like they're they're, they're here and they want you to do better mm-hmm. it's not like they want you to crumble and fall it's it, a lot of the times it was like hey please acknowledge do something me. about this yeah, yeah. acknowledge me by, by my pronouns do this do that it wasn't like oh my word Afropunk must fall. This and this. Mm, it, it, mm. Was, it was. It was. It was constructive. It was constructive, and then you still have the goal to reject that. Like what? It reminds me of Terry Crews, actually. Yeah. To a certain degree. Oh, the to- that that's that. Oh, it reminds that me. That was Terry tragic. Cruz. Is he still tweeting or is he? I don't know. I blocked him. Uh, same. <laughs> I had to. I had to because I was like, he just wasn't stopping. Like nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. But yeah, guys. If but it literally shows you that like. Being a token means that the people that you compromise mm-hmm. for the sake of your survival mm-hmm. will always be there when the people that yes. are making you a token yeah. are ba- go, go against you. Yeah. And I think that that understanding actually makes people do more nyons. Yeah. Like a person like Terry Crews knows that when he's over this whole thing he's doing mm-hmm. and he goes back to speaking about male abuse we are going to be there. Those too. people that he's been shitting on are going to yeah. be there. Yeah. And I feel spaces like even Afropunk, mm. they know that after a youngster finishes performing, after yeah. they finish um, singing, misgendering that yeah. DJ, the people who are supporting them, even though they call them out, mm. they're still going to be there to they're support them. They're still going to be there to support them and they use that. Mm. And I feel that we then, we feel we infantilize tokens mm-hmm. by feeling sorry for them all the time and yeah. not and not actually seeing that they have an amount of agency in what they're doing 100 percent like percent i think there's a very they're not being held against be, their will guys. yes there's a conversation <laughs> to be had there about yeah how the benefits that you get you are aware of and you weigh them and you weigh them you like listen i i 100 percent believe that tokens no they know okay the uh, except for women who are tokens to men that one shame <laughs> you you've lost you always lost anyway i i feel like they know that there are benefits that mm, they're gaining mm. and they have no problem holding on to them yes. they weigh them they're, they're like um is it better to lose these this friends and and, and these this benefits and this and this or you know or have integrity although you know that's very subjective but uh, mm. that's the first word that came to mind they're going to weigh those things out and they're going to be like, actually, I'll, I'll choose, choose the this. benefits. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel it's actually interesting to see when those tokens get kicked out. Yeah. And, like you're forced to, you don't have those benefits anymore. Yeah. You're forced to align yourself with the people that you haven't been choosing for the longest time. I mean, hello, Jordan Woods. <laughs> hello, Jordan Woods. <laughs> actually, Jordan Woods is a fantastic um, example, um, of, um, that. example of that. And I, I, you know, I don't know if she clocked that those are really white women um until they showed her no she didn't clock until they showed until her. they showed her that hello we are white just because you know we have these white features TM. and <laughs> <laughs> you know just because we have these features and you know we're a bit olivey doesn't you know mean it doesn't mean that we weren't core. and 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 guess who embraced her the black flu exactly and and even the people who sort of rescued her from that whole scandal mm, mm. were her black family so it's just yeah guys. just be yeah i think people have to have honest conversations with their children yeah. about things mm-hmm. um and once you see that your child is a token you need mm-hmm. to make them aware of what this means politically yeah. before it hurts them actually actually and also I you think, need yeah, to make them aware to of how they are hurting yeah. others yeah. by assuming that position and yeah. owning it yeah um i wish someone had done that for me yeah 100%. it would have been really helpful yeah i mean we know better now so you know, if ever we decide to make the decision to have kids, I think it's only fair to, to equip them 
um, yeah. for those types of situations. Obviously, we want to encourage, you know, genuine diversity mm, mm, and mm, inclusivity, mm, mm. and uh, you know, it must it must come just naturally. Mm, you mustn't but be there as yeah. like an ex- like an excuse, like yeah. as a you know, yeah. an auxiliary on some, I'm not racist, I have black friends. Yes, yes. See page four for <laughs> an image of my black friend. Yeah. You know, you, you need to equip people to know not yeah. to deal with that. And you also need to equip people to be able to say, hey, I mm. am that person. Yeah. When people are speaking about taxi drivers in a coded language, mm. which means black people, you yeah. need to say, no, that's me. That's me. Because exactly. they'll be like, I'm, you're not like the others. No, I'm I like, am. I like am the those others. others yeah. So you, we need to. I actually remember do having that. a few of those sort of uh, situations in 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 high school. We're like, no, you know, like ah, these black people, and I'm like, which black people? Mm. No, not like you. And I'm like, but I, that's me. Like mm. those other mm. black people. I actually, I I definitely said those things to someone. I just don't remember what happened. And I was like, but no, like that's me. That's I am me. Black people. That's that's I am black people. Like I am. I am those people. Actually, I think it was we had it was business studies class. It's always and business. It, oh, it was always business studies class. And there was a girl, and we were talking about be you know whenever we discuss that, it's always a mess. And the girl did the most, and we were all just like, but like, mm. no, we like, are here. We are here. We we are those black people that you're talking about that are uneducated, that are you know that lack integrity, that are corrupt. We are those black people. Mm-hmm. So what are you trying to say? And you know, like schools do, because you know, obviously it escalated. And you um, were and accused I, of yeah, doing the most. We were That's accused of doing the most. Uh, we went to the principal's office. Thankfully, he didn't really he didn't really condemn us or anything. He was just like, guys, I understand. But then he went on to cover it up, mm. <laughs> as always. Um, as always. So yeah, guys. Um, tokenism is a very interesting uh thing uh i don't even know what to call it as a phenomenon <laughs> it's, it's an ism so it's a system it's an, yeah an, a system it's a syst- um and we just need to be cognizant cognizant of it and conscious of it do it do it not do it with intention it sounds weird like if you are in the position of a to- of being a token yeah do some good with it yes yes do, do some, some good, good with it. Yeah. Like, because it's inevitable. Yeah. For many of us, the spaces we occupy, you yeah. will always be the li- you will always be outnumbered yes. by people who have more privilege than you. Hundreds. Do something that counts. Yeah. Except um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I Do something that counts. I just want you to do counts. away with that. Yeah, but do something that counts. Exactly. So, thanks for listening. But also, when you oh, do something wait. that counts, also just the labor, you must also... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure that you're not take care of doing yourself, too much. You know, yeah. But yeah, try... To do something like that. Yeah, yeah. Bert, yeah. thank you for listening. Thank you guys so much. Take care of yourselves. Um, take care yeah. of yourselves. Let us know how you dealt with being a token, mm-hmm. whether you're going through that right now, mm-hmm. um, or how you would advise people who are in the position of being a token to deal yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you bye so bye. much. Yeah, social media and all that other stuff. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>